everybody. So today begins the first video of me restarting this how to mod uh, series that I've been doing. Um, I've realized along the way that there have been a lot of things that I've covered a long, long time ago uh, that I've never really gone back to. And every single video that I do, I just do them without thinking about it. And unfortunately, that's not really helpful to you. So we're going to go through and we're going to piece by piece go through all the particular things that I do to start a mod. And especially today, get it ready, get everything ready and prepared for all the things to come together later on that I've been doing all this time, right? So first, when you start a mod, you um, have to build your file folder structure and you have to know a little bit about um, navigating the browser and doing that st sort of stuff and creating folders and what to put where. And I never really cover that ad nauseum uh, whereas I think that a lot of people would benefit from seeing kind of how my mind works and going through creating that folder structure. So let's go ahead and explore that today and get started in building our folder structure for our mod. All right, so here we are. We're in our um, file explorer browser. Um, and this is where you start to make decisions about how your mod is going to be put together. Um, that kind of stuff. As you can see on the top here of the folder, I have a drive called G that is specifically for the mods that I'm working on right now. Um, and there's a, a many different ones in here that I've worked on and have been working on. So in that case, this is not important. However, what is important is right clicking and creating new. Um, so this here is going to be, um, I create a, a folder that's going to contain everything that is about this mod. So um, I'm going to have a folder with the original OBJ or blend file or Collada file, like a DAE file. Um, any type of, of that sort of raw 3D material, there's gonna be a folder for that. There's gonna be a folder for those textures that are included with that uh, model, maybe from uh, Turbo Squid or from um, Humster or from a uh, model maker themselves like D3 Designs or any of those kind of things. So you wanna go ahead and you wanna put all that stuff together in one place so you have that available to you and you don't have to go across your entire hard drive to figure out where that all is, right? So um, we're just going to call this um, test mod video. Just, you know, this can be whatever it is. W900 or something, whatever you want it to be, okay? So we're going to refresh that. It should show up now in the list here. Um, test mod video. Here we are. Now we're empty. So here is where I create another folder. This is going to be for my 3D materials. So uh, 3D test mod. Um, and in here is where I'm going to have a blend file. I'm going to have an OBJ file. I'm going to have that sort of stuff. And then maybe another folder beneath it, like something like textures or you know any number of names some some modelers just give you a text folder and a zip file that they that they've created with that blend or with that obj file right so once we do that now we can go back out and we see there's our there's our test mod we're going to put our obj in here we're going to put our textures in one of these two folders whichever it is um you know, and maybe some other information. Maybe you have a text file. You've been doing research on this truck to get more information. They had this type of bumper, and it was aluminum, and it 
or it was steel, or it was painted, or it wasn't painted. All kinds of different things you can put in here just for your own reference. So we have that. Now, there's two more folders we need to make in this base area that we've created. One of them is going to be where the um, middle format files are contained. That's the what we consider as modders pit slash pim files or pix as labeled by um, blender i'm sorry not blender but scs um, and these files are the things that we open in blender regularly to edit those and they are not part of the game yet so those are the middle what we call middle format files that's the stuff that you save your uv layers to and you save all of that type of information to it's not a uh it's not ready for in game yet it's you it's something that you're working on so this is going to be i always put um so for example this is going to be test mod now i always put the exp at the end the only reason i do this is because this reminds me of when converter picks was brand new and every time you had to run converter picks on a mod to get it to extract everything inside, it would create this folder with the underscore exp. So for that reason and that reason alone, I put exp on the end of this because it's expanded or something. Well, I don't know exactly why they did that, but obviously it's to create a different directory than the than the mod would have been in regularly as to not confuse yourself so you can name it whatever you like put an extension on there that is not does not match exactly the one that you would extract meaning if it's a uh, w900.ses that's going to automatically extract to w900 so if you name your folder here w900 that's going to start like overwriting files and stuff if you happen to extract it in here or something of that nature we don't want that to happen so we want to make sure that that's that is a separate file folder name again why i put the underscore exp there the other one is going to be the in-game folder this is going to be where my finalized files are um, including my definition files my um if there's any additional hookup hookups like flares or um also other uh material files that are going to be for the um icons in game like when you're choosing what fender or whatever you can make that icon there those that type of stuff is going to be finalized in here so sometimes I put an ATS at the end of this, but most of the time I just say whatever it is. So in this case, it's going to be test mod. So in here, like I was saying, this is going to be the finalized stuff for um, the end of when it, when it ends up in the game. So it's going to have things like mod description and here you'll see and then you'll see the um like a def folder in here and you'll see uh something like manifest.sii file and then you'll see a small icon file stuff like that so this is where we take all this and we zip it up into a mod in the end when everything's done and this is the thing that we're going to drop into our mod folder that's for a different day however so now we're back out to the to the main folder with our 3d area and our uh, in-game folder and our middle format folder. Now the middle format folder is very important and it is important because this is the folder you want to set as your base path, your base project path in Blender. This is going to uh, allow you when you're using a donor truck 
for a donor trailer to put your own trailer or truck in the game to make it easier on yourself, as I've explained in previous videos. It's gonna save all those middle format files that it extracts from the SCS file right into this folder. So you don't have to go searching for them anywhere. You wanna make sure that they're all here available to you to use. Now, we're gonna go into Blender right now and I'm gonna show you exactly what is supposed to happen when you do this. So we're in Blender. If I create, if I, excuse me, not create, but if I go to, if I select as my base project path, and let me show you that again, over here on the right hand side, under the active tool and workspace settings, this is the um, this is the properties data box here. So we want to make sure we have that available. Um, so we're going to go here to the Active Tool and Workspace settings. You'll find the SCS Global settings after you install Blender Tools. You'll find the path settings, the SCS project base path. This is the project that you are working on. This is the mod that you are creating. It's nothing else. It's not the games folder. It's nothing like that. This is exactly what you are doing um, and what you want to produce. So in this case, for my truck or my mod in whatever case I'm doing, I'm going to go to my G folder, my mods folder, and find this test mod video in this test mod exp, right? Because I said that I wanted those files that um, ConverterPix wrapper will unpack for me. I want them to be in this test mod exp folder. Now there's nothing in there right now, and that's okay because things are going to happen now that we add, uh, we import things over top of what we're trying to do. So in this case, I, we can pretend I have a model available here to us, and then I can import over top using the converter picks wrapper. Again, this stuff, the converter picks wrapper is available on GitHub. I'll leave the link below, um, as well as Blender tools and all these other things uh, that you're going to need. So converter picks, it even says right here, .scs. These, it will open these files for you. Now it brings up a separate window. Um, now this is this can be confusing because there are a lot of extra kind of bits here to to get through um my games folder is in a different f is not in c the c drive so it's up here uh we're gonna go to games because that's where mine is steam library so it's wherever your steam library is steam apps common american truck simulator here's where you're gonna find all the base files so you're gonna find all your dlcs like your states your extra trucks um, your Goodyear stuff, your Halloween stuff, your heavy cargo SCS files. You can pull any of these things out of these files that you wish um, to look at. Now, the one trick that I have shown everybody before that I'm going to show you again right now is uh, the base SCS is the most important part of the whole uh, kit and caboodle here. So you're going to press add archive to list. What does that mean? Well, that means that if the truck you're importing, like say the W900, if that uses files from within the base.scs and you don't have this here, it's gonna import broken. Um, and when it imports broken, you're gonna export it broken and then you're gonna have a bad time. So we wanna make sure that this base SCS is in the archives. Now, if you're importing a trailer from the game, every single trailer in the game is in the base except for some of the stuff in forest harvesting and heavy cargo and things like that but 
your basic flatbeds and your basic, um, you know, reefers and and dry vans and things, those will all be within the base SCS file. Um, in this case, if we're gonna open a truck, say we're gonna open the International LT, that's over here. We're gonna now go down to the bottom and select Import SCS Model. It's gonna come up with a separate window. Now we have to find what we want to open. Vehicle, Truck, International, LT, um, I'm going to make an edit to the high-rise cabin. Okay. So, here we are. This It cannot preserve the import path. I didn't check a box. That's fine. I'm not worried about that in this particular case. Just showing you what happens. So... I can do whatever I want to this, I can edit this, and I can do all these things, but that's not what this is for. What this is for is to show you... Now, I, I, our test folder, our test mod XP, EXP for that matter, is where we set our project base folder. Now there's stuff in it, and we didn't put it there. There's stuff in it because when you use ConvertPix wrapper, it unpacks every texture and material and um, model in the Pix format, the middle format, for you. So everything is in here. It's using an environmental thing. So it's using a vehicle reflection. It's using a soft reflection on something. It's also using a fuzzy reflection on something. So now you have those files available to for you to use, as well as vehicle share truck share upgrade international lt now you have the light mask for that you have the lights available for that you have the interior dds files and the tobj files and the cabin information here's the cabin information that's the that's the physical 3d model right here in middle format so this is how you kind of create that base of uh in where you're going to put your mod and where your 3D information is going to end up and where all of your um, files that you import are going to end up because um, if you're making another truck maybe it's another international maybe it's not but if it even if it is you might not want any of these things so you're going to have to go in here and delete all those after you're done uh, editing what you want in Blender itself but that is for another video. This was exclusively to give you information about how I start up making my, my workflow a little bit easier. I hope that helps you guys a little bit uh, for your first mod. Today we took a look at how to set up your folders on your hard drive to uh, work on a new mod for yourself. And um, I hope that going through that and kind of importing the international helped you understand that when you do import a truck or parts, it will then put files and folders into that project base path that we set up, which is the purpose of it. Um, it's to, because you're going to need those files and you may need more files than that, but uh, it's a good start to get you on your way to creating your first mod. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next one.